There's a video circulating on the internet right now showing two little boys, brothers, pretending to be priests celebrating Mass. Their mom has made them little vestments, and they have a couple of wine glasses and pieces of bread. Being brothers, they get into a fight when the older brother tells the younger brother to hold up the wine glass chalice. No, shouts the younger brother. Mom, he thinks I'm the deacon. He says, he says I'm not the deacon, I'm the priest. Now the way he says deacon is good for the humility of any deacon. It's, it's true that children seldom aspire to be the assistant, the sidekick. Who wants to be Robin when you think you can be Batman? Who wants to be the Wookiee when you think you can be Han Solo? Father and I were talking about this a couple of weeks ago, and he thought that as a sidekick, I was, I was Gabby Hayes. <laughs> Do you remember Gabby Hayes? But life teaches us that not every one of us will take center stage. God has a plan for each of us and a role for each of us to play. As St. Paul taught, the mystical body of Christ, the church, has and needs many different members. Today's gospel gives us some good examples. We start with John the Baptist, who is standing in the streets of Bethany on the day after Jesus' baptism with two of his own disciples, almost certainly the future apostles, John and Andrew. When he sees Jesus walking by, he points them out to his own followers. Behold, the Lamb of God. And he loses those followers to Jesus. This is as it should be. John the Baptist knows his role. He knows that he serves God's purpose, not his own. Those followers follow Jesus at a distance, humbly, respectfully. So Jesus turns to meet them halfway, humbly, respectfully. He asks them what they are seeking and invites them back to the place where he is staying. Their answer indicates that they do not seek power, fame, honor, or wealth. They seek him. They address him as rabbi, which translates literally as my great one, a term for teacher. And he answers them using a standard phrase that rabbis used in their teaching. Come and you will see. It is four in the afternoon, one of the many details in the Gospel of John that convinced Pope Benedict, a great biblical scholar, that John's Gospel is indeed an eyewitness account. This encounter takes place during the first week of Jesus' public ministry. All week long, our daily Gospels have focused on this first week, giving us, through Mark, who was Peter's translator, Peter's point of view. Now, today, we get the Apostle John's view of Peter and his younger brother, Andrew. Andrew is remarkable because he is so unremarkable. He is remembered just as Peter's brother. His first act after discovering Jesus is to fetch his brother. In fact, throughout the Gospels, that seems to be his role. Andrew brings to Jesus the boy who has the loaves and fishes. Andrew is asked to bring to Jesus the Greeks who are seeking the Messiah. And here, of course, Andrew brings to Jesus the man who will lead his church, Peter. Andrew is never at the center of things, like the healing of Jairus' daughter, the transfiguration, or the temptation in the Garden of Gethsemane. Peter, James, and John are our Lord's companions then. Now, Andrew plays a supporting role even though he was one of the first two to follow Jesus. But Andrew seems content to serve in this role, bringing others to Jesus rather than bringing attention to himself. When he brings his brother Peter to Jesus, we see Jesus study Peter. The Greek verb used here means to, to gaze intently, seeing beneath the surface. Our Lord can see before him not just the sturdy commercial fisherman that Peter is, but the great church leader that he will be, the rock on which Jesus will found his church. He can see in Peter what God has planned for him. We discover God's plan for us 
by following him, by seeking him. He knows what he wants us to do, what he wants us to be. As God said through the prophet Jeremiah, I know the plans I have for you, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. God's plan for each of us may be very different from our own dreams. We, we tend to imagine ourselves the way the world wants us to be, taking care of number one, the stars of the movies of our lives, self-made men and self-made women. After all, we are sons and daughters of Adam and Eve who fell for the devil's offer of God-like knowledge and power. The great sin of the devil was pride as he attempted to be God, a sin that he led the first humans into as they tried to be as gods. Theologian Robert Kaiser, writing about this gospel, says, God's revelation in Christ enables persons to become who they really are. All the evil of the world is rooted in the misunderstanding of self. The darkness and falsehood of this world result because persons try to be other than what they really are. Jesus put it even more simply to St. Catherine of Siena in a vision when he summarized the whole Bible in a few words, which have sometimes been translated simply as, I'm God, you're not. We Catholics talk a lot about becoming the best versions of ourselves, but we cannot do it alone. We cannot find our way by ourselves. Socrates said that there are only two kinds of people, the wise who know that they are fools, and fools who think that they are wise. At Boston College, Peter Kreft adapted that for us Catholics, saying that there are saints who know that they are sinners, and sinners who think that they are saints. We need the help of God and his church to find our way. There's a reason why we pray, Thy will be done, at every Mass and in morning and evening prayers. Our will leads us astray. God's will saves us. We can keep St. Andrew in mind as we go. He was willing to let his big brother Peter, whom he had introduced to Jesus, be the leader of the apostles. Jesus saw in Peter the solid rock on which he could build his church. He saw something else in Andrew. Andrew had his own role to play, a supporting role, and today we do remember him as St. Andrew. One could do worse. When you think of yourself and the person God wants you to be, Remember the great Renaissance artist Michelangelo. According to legend, when a young boy asked the great Michelangelo why he was working so hard hitting the block of marble that would eventually become his greatest sculpture, the artist replied, Young man, there is an angel inside this rock, and I am setting him free. Well, there's a saint inside of you, and Jesus, through his church, will set that saint free if you let him. As Jesus said, come and you will see.